This is how to find if a spontaneous redox reaction occurs or not. The first one is titanium metal is added to water. All right, the way I usually do this is I remember that I have empty orbitals on the left and orbitals with electrons in them on the right side. I also make sure that when I list these, I have negative or more negative on top and positive or more positive on the bottom. Okay. Then what I do is I say, okay, titanium metal. What is that? Ti2 plus or Ti? I hope you're going to say that is Ti, the solid. And water, I think we can recognize that. Okay. Then the evaluation as to whether or not the reaction spontaneously occurs is to say, do the electrons go downhill from a higher energy orbital from titanium to a lower energy empty orbital from water? Yes, they do in this case. Okay, So I can take my top reaction. This is going to be my anode. And oxidation will occur, so I will flip it. This will be titanium going to titanium 2 plus aqueous plus 2 electrons. My water I will leave B. That is 2H2O liquid plus 2 electrons going to H2 gas plus 2 hydroxide aqueous. And then I can just add them so that my electrons cancel, which in this case turns out to be pretty easy. So I have titanium solid plus 2H2O liquid going to titanium 2 plus aqueous plus H2 gas plus 2 hydroxide aqueous. Okay. Now if you're not sure about this downhill method, remember I have chosen my titanium to be the anode and oxidized. I have chosen my water to be my cathode and for reduction to occur. Okay, So you can always check E cell. Okay, E cell is going to be equal to cathode minus anode. So that would be minus 0.83 minus a negative 1.63. A minus a minus becomes a positive, so we're left with plus 0 0.80 volts. Positive voltage means spontaneous. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. Cadmium metal is added to a solution of zinc 2 plus. Okay. Using my <clears throat> little method of making sure that I have negative up here and more positive down here, making empty orbitals on the left and full orbitals on the right, and then circling what I have. <clears throat> I have cadmium metal, and I have zinc 2 plus. And hopefully you can see that electrons are not going to spontaneously jump to a higher energy orbital. That's just not going to happen. So my answer is none. But, you know, in case you're not sure about this, remember, the way this is set up, zinc 2 plus is doing the reaction correct and it's being reduced. So you have effectively said that zinc 2 plus is your cathode and reduction occurs. Uh, you have effectively said by saying cadmium reacts that it is your anode and oxidation occurs there. All right well what happens when you get E cell here? Your cathode is minus 0.76 your anode is minus a minus 0 0.40, which is negative 0.36 volts. I'm sorry, you have a negative voltage, therefore it is non-spontaneous in the standard state anyway. Or at least non-extensive. Okay? Alright, so, last one. Copper metal is added to perchloric acid. Once again, I have these listed properly. I have more negative on the top, more positive on the bottom. Empty orbitals here. Some electrons in orbitals here. And as you can see, copper metal, I'm hoping you decide, is 
copper solid with some electrons. Perchloric acid, um, maybe you don't remember your acid names, but it's actually, um, perchloric acid is HClO4. <clears throat> and that's good because not only do we need the ClO4 one minus, but we also need some H1 plus. So we do have both materials here needed for the um, cathode and reduction. <clears throat> okay, pardon me. Frog in my throat. All right. So, we have effectively decided that the copper is my anode, and oxidation occurs here. So I will reverse it, which is what we always do to our anode. So we have copper going, and that's a solid, to copper 2+, plus, plus 2 electrons. I have my perchlorate, I'll write that as is plus two H1 pluses, plus two electrons going to my ClO3 minus, plus H2O liquid. And when I add them, my electrons conveniently cancel out again. So I'm left with ClO4 minus aqueous, plus two H plus aqueous, plus a copper solid going to ClO3 minus aqueous plus a copper 2 plus aqueous plus H2O liquid. Now I know it's spontaneous because I see the electrons go downhill, <clears throat> but you can always um, check it if you want with your E-cell. Okay, I've decided that my perchlorate is my cathode, so that is 1.19. My copper is my anode, so that's minus 0.34. So that gives me a plus 0.85 volts. And as previously discussed, positive means that we are dealing with a spontaneous at standard state reaction. That's all there is to those problems.